It's the GCN Racing News Show. This week, crashes and punctures at the Dauphiné, the start of the Sagan Show at the Tour de Suisse, two one-day races in Germany and the Netherlands, and we dip into the world of ultra-endurance with the Tour Divide and the Trans Am. The eight-day Criterion du Dauphiné concluded on Sunday with yet another big win for Team Sky. Their race didn't get off to the best of starts, with Geraint Thomas crashing in the opening prologue. Kwiatkowski defended yellow the following day, but then hit the deck himself on stage two, losing the jersey to Daryl Impey. Impey's third place there behind Pascal Ackerman, plus the win for him the day before, so I'm taking enough bonus seconds to take the race lead, and the green jersey, which he keeps through to the final stage on Sunday. It didn't take long for Sky to reclaim the jersey though, with an absolutely dominant display at the 35km team time trial. They put 37 seconds into specialist BMC racing and set an average speed of just under 57.5 k's per hour. A little bit slower than the record set by Orica Green Edge at the 2014 Tour de France, but given that this was 10 k's longer with two fewer riders, that was pretty blooming impressive. Then followed four consecutive mountain stages with summit finishes. What a day. Up, down, up, down. Full gas. Over those, it was basically a case of pass the parcel for Team Sky. Kwiatkowski passed the jersey onto Gianni Moscon on stage four, which was won by Julian Alaphilippe. And then Moscon passed it on to Thomas one day later on a stage taken by a relieved Dan Martin. That marked his first win for 16 months, believe it or not. And from there, they just had to defend. Something made all the easier by the continued emergence of Theo Gagan Hart, yet another climbing super talent. The 23 year old showed experience beyond his years and power beyond most of the rest of the peloton over the final four days of racing. And with Thomas on some brrilliant form, even two punctures and AG2R sticking the boot in couldn't stop him from taking the win. That's his second huge win, in fact, in a week long stage race after Paris Nice a couple of years ago. Palo Bilbao impressed with the only win from a breakaway on stage six. Pretty good considering he just came out of the Giro Italia with a sixth place overall there. And then we almost had a repeat on the final day with Danny Navarro. Unfortunately for him though, he was caught and passed by a very determined Adam Yates within sight of the line. Navarro's only consolation was he moved himself into the top 10 on the final GC, which looked like this. A British 1-2 with Thomas one minute ahead of Yates, local hero Rowan Bardet in third, and Dan Martin fourth, despite losing two and a half minutes to Team Sky in the team time trial. Now, if you didn't catch our highlights of the race, you can find them over on our Facebook page dedicated to racing, facebook.com forward slash GCN Cycling. One of my favourite parts of those was the five second summaries from the rides within the race. So here are a couple for you now. Attack, 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 ride on the front, Gruppetto. <laughs> you know it's going to be a hard start when Thomas de Gint is already half wheeling the car in the neutral start. Tough day. Moving on now to the other preparation race for the Tour de France, that being the Tour de Suisse. With a week extra between the two this year, the Tour de Suisse has attracted a few more of the favourites for July, including Richie Port of BMC Racing and the pair from Mobistar, Nara Quintana and Mikel Lander. The race opened with a 20k team time trial and BMC Racing did what they do best, putting 20 seconds into current world champions in the discipline, Team Sunweb, and putting Stefan Kung into yellow in his home race. Now, if you ever wondered what riders hear through their earpieces during a team time trial, here's your answer. These are the instructions you get from a team time trial coach, the best in the business, Marco Pinotti. Ale, 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 Greg, eh? fantastic. Now it's your moment, eh? Stefan, super juke. We it's go on, for yeah. the win, guys, eh? we go for the win. Amazing, guys, amazing. Fantastic time, eh? Yes, yes. Bravo, yes. Marco, bravo, bravo. <laughs> grande, Marco, grande, grande. <laughs> The following stage saw a reduced bunch sprint. The climbs on the circuit a little too much for the likes of Greipel, Demar and Christoph, but not for Gaviria or Sagan. The Colombian is naturally full of confidence after his three stage wins in California. Slightly too much confidence perhaps. He launched his sprint with over 250 meters to go, giving Peter Sagan plenty of time to get on his wheel and come round it. Impressive numbers from Gaviria nevertheless. According to Velon, he hit a maximum of 1,440 watts, an average 1,200 watts for the final 22 seconds to the line. The numbers are also impressive though for Peter Sagan. That was his 16th stage win at the Tour de Suisse and he's won at least one stage every year since 2011. And you wouldn't be surprised that tally increases either over the last seven days of the race, which concludes this coming Sunday. 
Whilst many of the sprinters are in Switzerland, some, like Marcel Kittel, are choosing a different route to the Tour de France. He, along with Mark Cavendish, will race the Tour of Slovenia later this week, but on Sunday he was in action at the Rund um Kulm in Germany. And it didn't go too well for Kittel. He looked to be in trouble midway through the race, and then, despite being perfectly positioned with 200 metres to go, he could only manage fifth. Apparently, he was pretty tired after a training camp at altitude that finished just before this race and the associated travel, but he'll surely be hoping to show some form in Slovenia, with the Tour de France now just around the corner. Man of the day again, though, was Sam Bennett. Showing some good legs after his three-stage wins at the Giro d'Italia recently, Bennett added a title to the one that he won back in 2014. The second big one-day race this week was the Ronde van Limburg over in the Netherlands, where, like Sam Bennett, Mathieu van der Poel backed up his win from 2014 when he was just 19 years old. He, quite incredibly, out-sprinted an in-form Nasabuani to the line. There really is no end to that man's talents. Before we finish with pro racing, there have been quite a few rumours around and about recently regarding rider transfers too, including a possible move for Caleb Ewan to Lotto Soudal, where he would apparently replace Andre Greipel, which is pretty interesting. We'll be discussing all of the gossip on the GCN show tomorrow, so make sure that you tune in for that. It's that time of the show now, where we look at something a little bit different, starting with the Tour Divide. Now this is an epic 2,745 mile route from Banff in Canada over the Great Divide mountain bike route down to New Mexico. It's a self-supported event that appears to favour the experienced. Our average age of the competitors this year is 45, and it's also an event where good equipment choice is paramount. Incredibly, 27% of the field are using the same bike. Uh, it's the Salsa Cutthroat, and here's an example for you from Adam Lisenby, who is running 2.2 inch Maxxis Icon tyres, a SRAM one by group set, and a custom frame bag from Broad Fork Bags. Whilst one of the youngest competitors, Timothy J. Irwin, is using this Trek 1120, with a few modifications, including bar end shifters and a Brooks saddle. The late great Mike Hall holds the current record for the event, 13 days, 22 hours and 51 minutes, that's a couple of years ago, and there's a really great article about Mike on the bikepacking.com website if you'd like to go and take a read of that. As things stand, two days in, we have two leaders locked together, they being Lewis Siddle and Richard Dunnett, who have covered 542 miles after two days and 17 hours, whilst Alexander Huchin leads the women's category with 340 miles covered in the same time. You can keep track of where everybody is over on the bikepacking.com website, and we will be giving you an update this time next week. Sticking with the ultra endurance world for another moment, the Trans Am is another self supported race travelling west to east across America. It's now in its fifth year. It kicked off on the 2nd of June, meaning that the front runners are now about half, halfway, shall I say, across the country. And that front runner currently is Marcel Graeber, who's ridden 2,332 miles, putting him just over 100 miles ahead of Peter Anderson, while Simone Bailey leads the women's race, having covered a little over 1,700 miles. Again, you can keep track on all the rides and their pro progress on the Trans Am Bike Race website. That's it for this week. Uh, next week we have the OVO Women's Tour. Emma Pooley is actually going to be on the ground there, so stay tuned to the GCN channel for more content from around the race. Plus we have the rest of the Tour de Suisse, La Route d'Occitanie, formerly the Route de Sud, where Alejandro Valverde continues his tour preparation. Plus we'll take a brief look at future greatness at the under 23 Giro d'Italia. See you then. In the meantime, if you would like to see what goes into being the best team time trial squad in the world, I was given an inside view by BMC Racing at the Vuelta last season. And you can find that video just down here.